Um, so you want to talk about, you want to think about your strategy. One of the things might be to network. You just want to network with people. Uh, here we go. The next one is career change, which may be applicable to this group. The next uh, strategy could be client retention. So if you're with a you know, CPA firm or something and you want to um, really have your, your client's visibility, that might be a good strategy. Another one is thought leadership. So you want to elevate yourself. Maybe you're looking for opportunities to sit on boards or, or to speak. The other one is lead generation. This is if you have your, your own consulting and you want to uh, develop leads, LinkedIn is a great place for that. Another one is market research. There's so much data. LinkedIn is a giant database. And so that could be a good strategy. And the third one or the last one might be um, if you're a recruiter or you know at a company where you want to hire people or business owner. So it's talent acquisition. I'm sure there are more things that you could do, but I would say, you know, when you pick one of these, it's going to inform the direction that you take. So that's why, uh, you know, some people say, well, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. And you wind up confusing your audience when you're trying to be too many things. You want to, you want to be one one focus. You can always change it. So, and I wanted to also, um, <laughs> this is kind of a fun exercise I ask people is um, if somebody's looking to hire you or spend money with you, I can guarantee you that they are Googling your name or your company or whatever. So if you all Google your name, I think for probably the most cases, unless you have a really common name, your LinkedIn profile is going to show up first. So, um, and I don't want to distract y'all, but if you want to do that and kind of see, that is the importance of LinkedIn, especially, you know, when you are looking in a, in a career change position. Okay. So another way to think of your profile is that digital handshake. It's like when somebody stops by and they meet you, you know, you want to make it very personable and clear as to who you are and what you do. And we're gonna go into some detail in terms of what the headline is and what the about sections are, but I just wanna take this opportunity to show you a difference. This is a client that I worked with and this is what he came to me with. And when we were done, this is what he left with. And you know, again, it's a day and night difference and it really does um, make a difference when people are looking at you, because they are. So, you know, here's another way to look at it. You got that house, right? And you're going to put it on the market. You think you're going to get a good buy if you look like this or if you look like this? Which one's going to get the better offer? This or this? Same thing with your profile. So I ask you, what is your curb appeal? So here's a study that was uh, uh, a research, I'm sorry, a research, a poll. That's the word, a poll that was done on LinkedIn. And the question was, you know, when you look at a profile, what do you look at first? You can see that photo is important, but the headline is what seems to draw people in. And the default on LinkedIn is your job title and your company. So if that's, you know, that's kind of redundant because it's already there. So if you can make your headline a little bit more informative, it will, I think, tell a, a bigger story. Your about section also gets some visibility. The banner gets a little visibility, but again, we're talking about what do you first look at? So when we're looking at you know, optimizing your profile, first and foremost, if you do not have a current professional headshot, I would say that should be top on your list because he, this happened to me a while back. I had long, long hair and um, I had a shorter hair photo. And I remember going to an event and the people, one or two person I met there, they looked at me a little bit strange. It was like they were like, you know, not prepared to see me the way I looked because I didn't look like my photo. And I thought, wow, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, I was setting an expectation. So it's really important that the photo that you have here is, is something that represents you in a professional way. You know, if, if you were to go to a professional event, how would you look, right? Would you, you know, present yourself, you know, in, in your gym shorts and, and, you know, kind of look like you were running on the track or would you clean yourself up and look nice? That's the first part, okay? The next part is the descriptive headline. And, and this is really where, you know, I, again, I change mine all the time. I, I gotta tell you, that's what I love about LinkedIn is it's a, it's a digital platform. And what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot of it 
and this way I have a copy of it, and um, and I'll I'll tweak this and see what kind of what's going to work better in terms of what my strategy is for that month. And I do change my strategy each month. And the next thing is an inviting background header. So this right now, this is what I'm using. It promotes uh, a book that I published, and it talks about you know who I'm working with, B two B executives. And then your make sure your contact information is current. Uh, a lot of times I'll see people um, that have like old company websites or um, they, they just have things in there that really don't need to be in there. Um, I would say for people not to have your birthday visible, what you may want to do is maybe two weeks before your birthday, make it visible. And then after your birthday, make it invisible. The reason why you might do that is some people that use that as a way to engage with people will send you a message, which is then a, a door opening to have a conversation. And if, you know, for the rest of the time, you don't need it visible, make sure that you have a way that people can contact you and, and make sure that if you are working with a company or you have a website or a blog or something like that, that you put that in there. And then, um, the other thing too is your uh, LinkedIn URL probably has your name and then maybe a bunch of weird characters there. Um, consider personalizing it as much as possible. You know, if you have a common name, you may use a, a dash or, or a middle initial or something, but get, get rid of those extraneous characters um, in your LinkedIn profile. And then make sure if you have your LinkedIn profile in your email signature or anywhere else that you update that. Okay, so think of it this way, you know, if you are, you know, said what they call, I guess, was it elevator pitch, right? You know, it's a one liner and this is the headline and it really sets the stage as to who you are, you know, what you do and why, why people should care about it. So why does it even matter? Well, look, look at these headlines that are showing up all over the place here. These people have the same headline. How do I tell them apart? Here's somebody that has something guiding sales processes, building client relationships, very interesting. Architect, podcaster, passionate about, and you can see only the first 45 or so characters show up, but this shows up where you post, it shows up when you invite someone to connect, it shows up in the newsfeed. So, you know, your, your headline is following you everywhere. And these are all the places. So um, another way to think of it, and since I have a dog here who's very motivated by treats, oh, I said the word, um, think of that profile as a way to draw people in, little sprinkles. You know, there's little things that make people curious enough that they want to click see more. They want to click on your headshot. They want to click on your about section. They want to look at what is this person about? I'm fascinated. Their profile looks really interesting. That's what you want. So again, you know, I, I talked about, you know, the, the importance of the headline. You can use this as a, as a template if you don't know what to do. And I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. But, you know, you can say, I help, I advise, you know, wh whatever action verb you want to pick. And, and who is that? You know, um, again, it can be anything. But um, when I show you some examples, this will make a little bit more sense. But you talk about who, what, and why. Okay, and these are these are some some points in terms of, you know, when people are searching <clears throat> on LinkedIn, <clears throat> it is driven by an algorithm. So the more clear information you have on your profile, the more likelihood that you will show up in a search from the recruiter back end to, um, you know, somebody just searching for something on LinkedIn. And it also makes you stand out from your competition. So. Here's another, um, here's a FANG member and, and he landed uh, really well at Hostfully, um, but I worked with him on his profile and I'm gonna show you his about section in a minute. But what we did here, he had like a bunch of, you know, keywords, I said, you know, this is like keywords. This doesn't tell me anything about what you do, you know? And when we dove into it, turns out that he's really about strategy. It was more or less not just keeping you out of the IRS's crosshairs, but it was really helping companies, you know, um, think about building value and, you know, looking at possible acquisition or whatever. So we, we put it right there, high performance strategic CFO. That is it. That's his point of distinction, which is very different than just saying CFO. 
right? And business partner, when we get here, private equity focus, because he loves that industry. Prop tech, FinTech, you know, software as service. And then this, financial leadership scaling growth-oriented mid-market companies, building shareholder value. So um, it turned out to work really well for him. The other thing we changed is instead of Stratford, Connecticut, I said, you know, make it a little broader, uh, New York City Metro. You know, because when recruiters or other people are searching geographically, you're likely to come up here, probably not searching for, you know, Stratford, Connecticut. Here's another example. Um, this now, now this is what I mean as, as a profile that this is not enticing at all. I mean, when you look at this, it's like, this is scary, right? I, I don't like the picture. There's nothing here. Chief executive is like, what is that? You know, again, in Fort Smith, Arkansas, here's what we did, found this nice image. You know, this is a, a nice cornerstone for his brand, a great photo. Yes, CEO matters, okay, because he's connecting with other CEOs. But then it says a little bit about what he does. He provides critical business decision support for middle market investors. Oh, that's what he does, right? And instead of Fort Smith, he went with his corporate headquarters, which is in the D.C. area. So you can see, again, how, how this kind of builds out a little bit more. And, um, oh, there we go. So it, it, is, is that making sense to everybody? I'm going to give you another example here. This is another FANG member, uh, Tom Zinsmeyer. And, and again, I, I helped him put it that way because he wanted to have Thomas. But I said, you know, if you go by Tom, don't make it hard for people. You know, put, put your name there. And then we talked about, you know, really what his, his um, gist, we put this leading finance and operations in global organization. He's a pharmaceutical executive. And so, you know, just having this background didn't really cut it. But when we added this in here, it, it kind of gave him that underscore. And then this is, again, what he does is partner leading global supply chain commercial organizations, best in class, healthcare, high tech, consumer. You know, that's his, and again, not New Albany, but Columbus, a little bigger geographic area. So, um, and then we also, since he was kind of in between, what we did was we created a company page for him. So that's his Zinsmeister, and that was his company page that we made. So it doesn't look like he's he's kind of one of those you know people that what kind of companies that doesn't exist. So now we're going to talk about the about section, and I'm going to blow your mind with this because you know most people's about section are either a copy of their CV or resume, or it's not even completed. There's nothing there, or it's just a bunch of keywords. Or it's, it's them talking about themselves. Have you ever gone to an event and you met somebody and, and you know, you're talking with them and they're talking about themselves and you just want to like get out of that conversation, right? Because it's really awkward. And that's kind of how like with, a, with your about section, you don't need to make it about you. You want to make it about the reader, the person that's reading it, your target audience. So, you know, first and foremost, it should not be a copy paste of the resume. You really need to start with something that is going to bring the reader in. Remember I talked about the breadcrumbs and making it magnetic. And the person that's reading this, your audience, that's who you focus on. Um, I, one of the writers that I follow, she said it was really interesting. Warren Buffett writes his corporate uh, shareholder letter to his sister. That's the audience he's focusing on because he wants to make it understandable. So his uh, shareholder letter is Dear Doris. He doesn't say Dear Doris. He says Dear Shareholders. But it's really, when you can focus on that one, you call it an avatar or persona or whatever you want to call it, if you can focus on your one ideal audience and build around that as to what's relevant to them, then you're really speaking to somebody that's listening. First person, you don't want to sell. You want to inform and educate, and it's good to have a call to action. So let me show you what that looks like. So John, again, I'll bring John up here. This is what we did. We pulled this out, and we talked to his ideal target was the investment banker. And we wanted to get right into the pain. So this is what I would call the hook. So as an investment banker, you often need to have difficult conversations with your clients. It's a delicate dance. You know, and some of those might include, and then we go through them. And then we talk a little bit about what his company does. And then here's his call to action. So again, you know, you may not put your, you don't have to put these things in here, but I'm just showing you, you know, an example of how it's built out. And here's a little fun thing. He says, I'm known as Jay-Z. We share the same birthday. 
So, <laughs> so it's kind of like adding a little twist in there because he had a great sense of humor. So this is what I say is a real client centric about section. It's really important real estate and you can work in your keywords without just putting a list of keywords. Here's another example. We talked about um, Oresti earlier. This is what he had before. And again, he had, you know, a strategic proof of finance, blah, 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 industries, and then a lot of keywords. This, I, I would not even read this, it's boring. Now he's talking, you know who his audience was? That smart CEO, whoops, let me go back. Oh, the smart CEO who's looking to build entity value, whether it be for exit, investment, whatever. And then he goes through here and he identifies the pain. So what's happening is this smart CEO is reading this and he's like, you know, we got to get this guy in here. This is who we want. We don't want Joe down the hall who's just keeping us out of, you know, getting an audit. We want somebody that's going to help us, you know, really build value for this company. Big difference. Okay. That's why he landed. And here's another one. So suppose you don't have that story. Tom had an accident and it took him out of the workforce for a bit of time. And, you know, his concern was when a recruiter or a company looks at his, you know, kind of gap, if they're going to think, well, you know, this guy, or, or if he mentions that he had this biking accident, they're going to think, oh, you know, he's not strong, whatever. So we used a storytelling method based on the Titanic, you know, what happened before up to the moment, and then what the future looks like. And, you know, again, we leave on a high note, but it's really talking about, here's the hook. Without warning, everything changed as my world literally turned upside down. Whoa, what do you, what do you mean? You know, you're going to click see more, you know? And then he tells a little bit about his story. And then he talks about, you know, what, what was his kind of, what took him down, but actually he turned it around to something very, very positive. And then here's the future, you know? So it's really building that, taking what you may see as, a perceived disadvantage and turning that into something that's very positive. Okay, so now there's this billboard thing here, right? You know, when you see these blank billboards, it's like, don't waste that space. You know, use it as some kind of opportunity. I, I gave a talk to the Fang women um, a little while ago and I pulled some of their profiles here and I just want to show you some examples. The ones that don't have anything, you say, wow, that's a missed opportunity. There are other ways of putting things in the background. There's resources, but definitely put something there. Don't, don't just leave it blank like this. When I say blank is blank. So, and there's a bunch of resources. You can take a snapshot of this if you want. Uh, Canva is actually what I'm using for this presentation, but Canva is a great resource. This is Canva right here. They give you all kinds of templates. Adobe Express is a free resource, or you can just search on Google for LinkedIn banner templates and you'll find a whole bunch of things. And, and what you do is you'll, you'll just follow the prompts and you can upload it to your profile. So um, the next part of this is your experience. And this is all these other things here. And I will tell you from the recruiter um, LinkedIn platform, the back end of that, um, the more complete your profile is, you know, meaning all these sections are filled out, the higher you're going to rank in a search result. Okay, because there's there's over a billion profiles now in, in LinkedIn, active profile. I don't know if they're all active, but th that's what they say. They have a billion members, give or take a few million. Um, and so, you know, there may be a lot of people that have similar background and the, the profiles that are much more enhanced rise to the top. And same thing here. Like if you have these weird gray avatars, try to find the company look at who it is you know sometimes they change names there's work around that you can do that or if it's your own consulting company or you're in between positions you can create your own company page it takes five minutes to do it it's you know you don't have to pay to do it you can just do it but it makes a big difference you know it, it just makes you look a little bit more legit and same thing with your um, all your entities your education because again a recruiter may be searching for i want people that worked at Starbucks. I want people that worked at PG&E. I want people that went to Harvard. You know, if you're connected to the entity, then you're going to show in that search. But if you're like this, no, you're not going to show. So now if we kick it up a notch, there's some other things that you can do. The pronunciation feature is a fun way. You got nine seconds, but it's your voice. And it's really cool because you can say something. You know, I, I, I think I I don't even remember what I said. I think I tell people to download their database, but I say, hey, I'm Judy Hayes and thanks for stopping by my profile. And, um, you know, here's a tip for the day or something like that. 
I change it so I don't remember, but it's fun to use. You can do the verification if you want, because um, now LinkedIn is using some AI to uh, spot fake profiles, so it can't hurt. Um, I also suggest you set up uh, two factor authentication because, again, there's been some people hacking into accounts, taking over accounts. So make sure your account is secure. Do not have a password that is um, somebody, a client um, that I'm working with just told me his password today and it was something like LinkedIn 24 or something like that. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. So, you know, make sure you're secure. The next thing is um, use your featured section. You know, if you have articles, and I think that was one of the questions, Joyce, that you asked me to cover, um, put your articles and whatever you want to promote in your featured section here. You can pull in um, things from the outside. You can pull in things that you've posted. You can pull in videos. You can pull in, um, you know, all kinds of media, you know, but um, definitely use your featured section. And then the next thing is the about summary section, which I talked about earlier, make sure it's filled out, you know, and I say kick it up a notch because there's a majority of people that just bypass this. They don't do anything with it. You know, and then there's this part, which when you're in financial services, there's a lot of things that you can put in here. I just landed a four figure client through this professional, uh, whatever it is, providing services here. I, I was like, wow, that's where it came from. And so, you know, put in, um, take a look at what it is and you can add it to your profile. Now I know um, I don't, here's where it gets a little tricky. If you have the open to work set up, but you don't have it visible, I don't know if you can also have providing services. I think you may have to pick one or the other. So depending upon where you are in your journey, that may dictate, you know, how you do that. If you do choose the open to work, I would not put the banner on your profile. I, I just don't, that does not add any value whatsoever. Okay, I would um, just leave it so recruiters can see it, uh, but you don't want to like put a big flag out there saying that. Okay, so the next part of the um, framework is your network. Okay, so we've now dressed you up for the party. Okay, that that's your elevate part. You know, you're you're all dressed up, and now you're invited to this event. Well, who is going to be at the event? Well, I, I just love this. I, I think we're all connected to this guy, Kevin Bacon. You know, you've all heard of this, right? This it's six degrees of separation. And it's just hilarious. And they were talking about, you know, how you connected. Well, on LinkedIn, it's like this. You've got your first degree connections. Okay. By the way, all of you should be connected to one another. You should all be connected to one another because it, it will benefit everyone. Nobody can steal anybody's network. So, you know, if people are like, I don't want to connect because you're going to steal my network. It doesn't happen. OK, connecting with one another actually elevates your chance of being um, visible. And also, you should all be following the FANG uh, LinkedIn company page. OK, those are two things that, that I encourage you to do. So first degree connections are when Joyce, you and I are connected. Adele, we just connected. Now, um, Joyce, you may be connected to some other people that I'm not yet connected to, but I am in proximity, so I'm a friend of them. Since I know you and you're connected to them, I have proximity to them, okay? And this is important if you are looking to work for a particular company, you want to surround yourself with as many people at that company as possible. So, you know, that means that, you know, if you can get in through the marketing department, through the, um, you know, maybe the position uh, that you're looking to, to take, or the person above that. I don't know if you're going to get CFO right away. It depends on how your profile is set up. But you know, you want to surround yourself to get as many of these at a particular target company as possible. The third levels are we have nothing in common. You know, not even um, uh, you know a connection. And it's a little bit harder to make a third degree connection. And then there are those where there's you're way out there. They're, you're not even connected. There's no common thread, no alumni or no group or anything like that. Um, you know, again, out of a billion members, there's going to be some of that, but I really focus on my first and second degree connections and try to move as many thirds into the second as possible. So you all know what this thing is. <laughs> I actually have one of these. I love it. It's huge. And um, it's all like yellowed now too. It's kind of funny, the old school way. Uh, but, you know, really, are you leveraging the network? You know, are you looking at who you're connected to? Um, I'll show you after I close the slideshow is, and we were talking about it earlier, 
Um, LinkedIn really controls the data, right, on your uh, on your network. So if you're connected to, you know, I, I don't know what size networks you have, but you've worked hard to make those connections, you know, because not everyone accepts an invite. And so if you were to lose access to that, that would really be detrimental, right? So I encourage everyone to download their LinkedIn database. The last time I surveyed the FANG group, only um, actually 72% did not ever or in more than a year download their network. And um, what I do when I download the network is I sort it by company. And then I put a filter in the position column and I pull out the target position. So if I'm looking to connect with chief marketing officers, I will do that search. And there's like a revelation when you see that, oh, I didn't know that, you know, Sally is now with this company. Oh my gosh. And I'm applying for an opportunity there. Let me connect with Sally, have a conversation with her and see what the inside story is. Really valuable, you know, when you have access to your network like that. And, you know, here's the thing, um, and this is a lot to digest here, but it's always good to grow your network, but not nilly willy, you know, like just connecting with anybody, uh, because what, what you see in your newsfeed and your ability to connect with other people has to do with who you're initially connected with, right? Because we, I went over the first degree, second degree, third degree. So um, that's why I said, if you all connect with one another, you have that in common and it's a good start. And then, you know, wherever you went to school, there's um, look for people that are in the financial world or whatever your world is. Look for people from your alumni where you went to school and just start connecting with those people from the year you graduate, maybe a couple of years back, a couple of years forward and start to build that because there's a lot of opportunity there. You know, people that you used to work with current and, and in, in previous lives, you know, when it makes sense. When I lived in Austin, Texas, which I lived in Texas for 17 years, um, I worked for the Chamber of Commerce and I connected with every single member company, you know, and their teams. And then when I moved to New York in 2014, I said, hmm, should I disconnect from those people? No, no, no. And what was funny was several people had then left Austin and had moved to New York, which I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So, you know, past and present colleagues, it's really interesting because you already have that familiarity with them. And that's an easy connection. Clients and prospects, you know, if prospects could be prospective, you know, employers, things like that. But I connect with all my clients and their team. You know, I surround my connections with multiple people at the companies. Um, top industry lists are a great way to connect with people because you can you can also congratulate them. You know, there's like I, I just worked with a top uh, procurement, top female procurement leaders. I thought that was interesting, and really, really impressive people. And I worked with a client to connect him with those people on the list, and and he had a really good um, response rate with that. People, if you're on a paid account, you can see. Uh, I think it's a 90 day look back as to who's looking at your profile. You know, um, there's a local celebrity here in Port Washington uh, where, I, where I am. And uh, he just looked at my profile and I was like, wow. You know, so I sent him a message. We were already connected. I said, hey, let's have coffee at this new place on Main Street, you know, because he looked at my profile. So it's like, great, we reconnect. You know, who engages with your content? You know, when you if in, when you're posting, if people are engaging with that content, it's a great opportunity to say, you know, thank you. I'm really glad that you like that post I shared about, you know, X, Y, Z would love to connect. And then warm introductions is another way. And it might be, um, Joyce, you, you know, I see that you're connected to Adele and I would really um, love to have a conversation with her. Do you think you can introduce us or can I use your name? That's a warm introduction. How are we doing so far? Have I blown your minds, everyone? Or am I going too fast? Am I okay? Everyone okay? Yeah, did I put you all to sleep? It's perfect. It's so okay. interesting. <laughs> okay. All really right. Good. Okay, good, good. And we have 94 it, people. Wow. Okay. So is it okay to ask a question? Um, yes. You want to ask a question, please. So when you uh suggest downloading the database, is that just first connection or second connection? Or like what what is the you can tell I never did it. So what what's the what ends up being downloaded? It's going to be your first degree connections. And what it's going to be is a, a CSV file. It's going to have first name, last name, position, company, date you connected, 
their email if they've agreed to share that and their uh, LinkedIn URL. And um, that is in, and I put that in a spreadsheet and then I run some filters and pivot tables and things like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's what you'd get. And depending upon how, um, you know, how, how many people you're growing your network with, you could do it quarterly, you could do it every month, you know, but definitely do it annually, definitely. Okay. Great, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so, you know, here's some, these are real, these are real um, connection requests that I've gotten. Um, and Radice is my middle name. So that is so bizarre. That's somebody using automation. Um, you know, here's one going right in there. He's going right for the kill. Hey, Judy, can we talk next week? You know, it's regarding something that he wants to sell me. Um, here's another one, $50,000 saved in taxes for business owners. You know, um, no, thank you. Uh, well, I really much say, I actually try looking for a job, but you're smiles. Oh my gosh. You know, LinkedIn is not Tinder. Um, and then here's somebody, I think that got banned. <laughs> and so, and then this one, I, this is one of my favorite ones. At first you take my love. I hope you're very well. Um, I'm selling Facebook ads. What? So again, you don't want to do requests like this. You want to do something that's a little bit more personal. So here's what not to do. Do not use automation. I, I have somebody reached out to me, two people actually, last week, LinkedIn suspended their account because it detected automation. And it was some Chrome plugin that they had. And um, it was it was devastating, but we actually we were successful in doing the outreach to get them both back online. But don't use automation. It's tempting, but don't do it. Um, and like the pitch in the invite, you're not going to go for the kill. The goal of the invite is to make the connection, not to sell something. And don't do those generic ones that are just like that says connect and there's no context whatsoever, um, unless it's somebody that knows you and you just had a conversation and you do that. Um, you don't want to be creepy and you don't want to use those cliche like oh i just got one today and and um it was automated and he says oh we're both uh, in new york so i thought we would connect he's like really <laughs> so and then you know that's the vagueness part so um that's what not to do but instead here's how i do it and i i get a really high conversion rate because i mentioned there's a reason why i want to connect you know somebody shared somebody's post and i thought it was great and she's in the uk and i said all the way from nyc she connected here's another one you know i love her content it would be great to connect again she was in another place not near new york Here's another one, kind enough to introduce us. I'm following up, you know, here's another one. I'm looking forward to the event. So nice of Nina to introduce us. So again, and the reason why it's important to personalize your connection request is sometimes you may lose touch with this person and then you're connected. It's like, how the heck do I know that person? If you go back and look in your messages, you'll see the whole message thread. Now, if any of you are on Sales Navigator, do not use the messaging in Sales Navigator because if you ever decide you don't want Sales Navigator anymore, you lose all that history. So I always keep everything in the main LinkedIn. Sales Navigator is actually an, an add-on platform to LinkedIn. So it's really, it's LinkedIn slash Sales Navigator, whatever. So, um, you know, having a personalized connection request really helps give you context. And so, and here's the thing, and I call it social selling because, it, you know, the bottom line is we are selling something, you know, you're selling yourself for a job opportunity or for consultation or whatever it is. And, but here's what I find is like, if you really are in a hurry, you know, you're going to be sloppy, but if you take the time to build rapport and, and we'll talk about no like, and trust in a minute. Um, but if, if you can stay top of mind without being a pain in the butt, and you can share, you know, insightful comments and participate in a conversation and be consistent with showing up, then when there's some pain that needs relief, they're going to come for you. And so what does that look like? Here's an example. This is one of my clients. You know, it's um, here's my client. And, and in a gentle way, this is back from 2019. And he reaches out. You know, and this is, we work together in, in terms of making it sound like he's talking, you know, and you don't put a lot of fancy punctuation. It's like you were texting somebody, you know, and he's just asking, how are things going at company? You know, the business is strong. Let me know if you want to catch up, you know, and then, yeah, thanks for reaching out. And he talks about what he's doing, da, 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 da. Then, okay, the following year, he comes back and he says, hey, hope you're doing well. This was actually um, in 23. So from 19 to 23, 
Meanwhile, we had been posting and he'd been engaging with the content, but here's what he says. Hope you're doing well. Looks like your business has expanded. I notice you're doing routing and scheduling and we need this now. Wow. I'll reach out, set up an email. Boom. This is what it led to a five figure paid engagement. And it's because of this way of keeping in touch, showing up, putting content out there, not being salesy. And like I said, when, when you know, the, the problem is such that it needs relief and you've been there all along, they're the person you're gonna, they're gonna think of. All right, so the, the next piece of the puzzle is the engagement. So we've dressed you up for this event, okay? You look really good. And you get a pretty good sense of the guest list. You know, you know who's going to be there. There's some people that you know. There's some people that are potential employers or business associates. And there's some people that you would love to meet, right? So how are you going to do that? Well, here's what I mentioned about know, like, and trust. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a common thing that people talk about. But, you know, the no part is um, that's really the profile and, and that they know you, you know, they, they oh, yeah, I've seen so and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you likable? You know? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, very good. You know, great insights, whatever. Where's the trust come in? It, it all comes together. So the short form content could be, you know, commenting, messaging, things like that. That's where you're building up the no part. I know who you are. I like you. You're very helpful. And the long form content is maybe a little bit more insight. Maybe you write an article or you share something or you're speaking at an event or something a little bit more in depth. That's where the trust starts to come in. And that controlled form is where you're maybe taking that conversation offline. Maybe you have an email uh, exchange or maybe you're on a Zoom call or something like that, but you're working this all together. And when all three of them are working together, that's the opportunity. You know, and, and the funny thing is that, you know, when I have to do something, I'm going to ask my neighbor, hey, who do you use for X, Y, Z? Boom. I want to buy from people that that have been vetted. OK, I don't I don't really trust those reviews online because sometimes they're all like on the same date. It's like, well, that's suspect. But here it is. This is the truth. You know, look at your own decision making process. Right. Um, I want to go to a restaurant. Where do you suggest we go? Right. Okay, so it's the same thing on LinkedIn is you really want to build your KLT factor. And so more about this strategy stuff, we're going to talk about content. Content is the thing I did a whole talk on content. Content is, is what I would describe as the food and, and um, refreshments served at the event. That's the content, right? So you're dressed up professionally, you like the audience, there's a lot of good energy. And they're serving great food, conversation, right? And so, you know, the types of strategy that you can have with LinkedIn, and, and you don't have to just pick one, you know, you can rotate these, you know, and, and the, the leadership is really, um, if you're nervous about doing things on LinkedIn, start with commenting. And um, in a minute, I'm going to tell you how to find people that you can then start to comment. But if you can find you know, a couple of people that are that are pretty top of their game, they've got a good network, a lot of visibility, a lot of engagement, get into those conversations, just like you would at a real event, right? You'd kind of, you know, work the room and there's a little conversation going here and you're going to stand there, you're going to, you know, start to engage. Um, you know, unique buying, this is the uniqueness of, of what you're putting out there. So it's really your niche or your expertise. So if it's, you know, you're working on um, uh, private equity and, and uh, M&A valuation and stuff like that, that's your lane that you're talking in. If you're working on, you know, some strategy or whatever, that's what you're talking about. Third party content is really rich. You know, there's a lot of great curated sources out there. Um, I like the um, um, industry dives are really good because um, they have it by vertical industry. And they have some really good content and I get their uh, weekly wrap up on the industry drive. Smart Brief is another good aggregated site that has some really good content. Um, so there's a lot of it out there and you can set up some search criteria to find these. There's a tool called Feedly that can scrape some, some feeds that will give you some current articles. When you're at events, there's so much content that you can work with before the event, during the event, you can connect with the speakers, you can you know post updates about the event. You know, if it's a trade show or, or, you know, something like this. And then there's the personal professional. And this is what people, they kind of crave this. It's like, 
you know, tell me a little bit about you. That's why I like the pronunciation feature because you can hear someone's voice. You know, I, I posted something about my daughter's birthday and we were both standing on the Brooklyn Bridge with that in the backdrop. And then I had a, a it juxtaposed with a picture of her as a baby newborn. And I said it's something to the effect of, um, I, you know, no experience and I got the job, you know, and it was something like that. And I, I turned it into like, it's personal because it was a daughter, but it's professional because it's talking about, you know, how sometimes you gotta make it till you fake it, right? So that's what I mean uh, by personal professional. You don't wanna share private information and you wanna avoid anything controversial or political. It's not worth it, don't do it. So um, what I see is that the common traps on LinkedIn is I, I just said getting too personal online. You, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be inappropriate. And, and the other one is, you know, you don't want to be this, this snake oil salesman that's pitch slapping everybody and dealing out cards, you know, business cards like their blackjack dealer. Uh, don't do that. And then, the, you know, this one I find is very common. People are just, I don't know what to say. I don't want to look stupid. I don't, you know, ah, don't let the fear hold you back. I think it's about, I think the latest number was about 16% of the LinkedIn, um, you know, users are active. 16%. Wow. You know, that means there's a huge opportunity for visibility. There really is. So a couple of things that you can do is when you find people, you know, like I said, that are highly active, I do a lot of work with supply chain executives. And, um, you know, there's a couple of people that are very, very prolific, and they provide great content and insights. And so, you know, if we're not connected to them, what I'll do is I'll follow and ring their bell. I'll also set up a folder and I'll bookmark profiles. So I'll pick like, you know, okay, these are the five people that I love what they post. They get a lot of engagement. I want to get in on that conversation. And so by having the bookmark, it's an easy way that I can log on. It takes me 15 minutes. I look at what they posted. I check my notifications and I engage with their posts and, and it works really well. So another thing is, you know, there's this thing called the algo rhythm, which is basically a mathematical formula. You know, that's all it is. And, and it takes um, different things that you do into account and it gives it a score. And that's what it winds up delivering into your inbox, what it thinks you want to see or into your feed. So here's an example of, you know, engagement. So uh, this is my client put a post and somebody said, now that's pretty interesting. And then my client says, thanks, Ed. We love talking about this. And then, you know, come to the bonfire and then sold. And he goes back and forth. And this is how you do it. You want to go back and forth and have this dialogue just like you would in real life. I mean, if you were at an event and somebody was talking to you and you're just standing there, you know, not saying anything, ah, oh, that's awkward, right? Um, or if they said something to you and you just turned around and walked away, that's rude, right? So, you know, just find, that's why I said, find five people, five people that are in the industry that are like out there doing some really good content and just get in on the conversation through the comments. So, um, and here's another way of in engagement opportunities. You know, um, this was a post uh, that, that I shared. There was, you know, 40 engagements here. By the way, these get when you, not just the thumbs up, but if you use the heart or the, uh, you know, the insight or the laugh, those have a higher algorithm score. So, you know, it's always better um, when you're engaging is to hit that one. But look at the, and again, look at their headlines. Their headlines, these are all the people that have engaged and, and these are the headlines. Of, uh, it tells me a little bit about who they are. Now, if I'm not connected to them, you see second degree, second degree, third degree, second degree, I will then reach out to them and say, you know what, I, I really appreciate you know, what, what you said on that post that I shared, would be great to have you in my network, right? So third is gonna be a little harder for me to connect because we don't have anyone in common, but you know, the second degree, so that's how I look at engagement as a way to build my network, okay? So far so good, everyone's still with me? Okay, um, so again, here, here's one where, you know, insights, here's something that, you know, somebody uh, wrote on one of my posts, you know, a lot of, a lot of really good insights that you shared there. Uh, you know, again, it should be more than five words. You know, they, they say, if you comment first and then hit the reaction, it has a better um, engagement rate, uh, you know, share your expertise and only tag when it really makes sense, okay? Because otherwise, um, what I'm hearing from the latest algorithm report is it actually suppresses your post if you have too many hashtags or too many people tagged. 
So again, talk about no like, and trust. Here's an example. This person, um, I connected with her. I showed you this earlier. Okay. And then she sends this back. Thank you. I'm so pleased. Uh, you're enjoying my content, Lucy. Okay. Cause I didn't know her name, Lucinda, Lucy. Oh, okay. And then, then she comes back a little bit later and I just like the way she approached it. And she's, she's in the UK. So it's kind of like the way she talks. I had a quick snoop on your profile and you know it looks really interesting i'd love to learn more about you you know would you be open to this i didn't find this salesy at all usually i don't um like when people send me links and stuff like that but it just seemed really interesting and i've been following her work and i really liked it anyway i i did have that conversation and i hired her and and she's still working with me um as a as a contractor um, on some projects. So that's how that happens. She put out great content. I reached out to her. She responded back and then she, you know, put a leap of faith out there and said, you know, hope you don't mind. And voila, it happened. Here's another example, you know, going back and forth, you know, I am trying to build credibility and trust. You know, this is how I connected with her. This was the follow-up. And then, you know, it goes from there. And you really want to get that conversation, whether it's a Zoom call, phone call, meeting, whatever. Um, you want That's the goal is you want to try to move and not in a creepy way. Don't tell people you want to move them to WhatsApp or something like that, because that's like, uh, no, thank you. Um, but you want to, in a professional way, you want to build that and then say, hey, you know, are you open to this or whatever? So, and again, what not to do, you know, spam. Spam, spam, spam. And that's like, I got something recently, hadn't heard from this person in like three years. And all of a sudden I get this long, long, long message with links and all this stuff. And I was like, what is this? You know, that's spam. It's something that's unwanted. Um, ignoring, like I said, is rude. You know, you want to avoid the hot stuff that's going to get you um, polarized on the platform. Um, you know, your profile is not a one and done. You know, you really want to make sure things are current there. And this is like, you know, remember the old days when we used to go to trade shows and collect those business cards. And then, you know, I've got like several boxes of those business cards. I don't even know who these people are, right? But I, I collected them. Now I forgot about them. Don't be generic and don't be a passive user. Don't, don't be out there looking in the window at that event that's happening. You know, and again, you know, really the fortune, it, you're, what do they say? Your network is your net worth. I thought that was interesting. Your network is your net worth, right? You know, it's who you know, okay? Most of the people that have landed opportunities for a variety of reasons, it's from somebody they knew or somebody that referred them. And that's really powerful. It's much easier to have that warm connection than a cold call, you know? And again, leading to your solution, not with your solution. You know, because I think people get off put when you lead right away. If you're too aggressive in the in the front part, you want to lead to it. You know, again, these are things that that I suggest that you can do. Um, you know, leverage who you're connected to. Be personal. Quality over quantity, really important, very important. So you know, and people say, oh, I don't know what to post. I have no idea. Well, you can take a shot of this because here's a bunch of stuff. Hey, a book review. You read books. Take a picture of a stack of books that's on your nightstand and talk about your favorite books and then ask a question. What book are you reading? You'll see what kind of response you get on that. Have you been to an industry event recently? You know, well, put out a recap, you know, or maybe you could do a poll or maybe you have an event that's coming up or maybe there's somebody you just want to shout out and say, hey, you know, I just did this and fantastic, you know, but there's a lot of things that you can do here. There's a lot of different things that you can post. So um, I wanted to give you a recap and some resources for success. How are we doing on time? Are we okay? 627? Yeah, we're doing great. This okay. is great. All right, good. Okay, everyone's still with me? Yeah? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, bringing back the framework, you know, the Elevate is your profile, your executive brand. You are a brand. You know, the expand part, or, or those are the guests that are at this virtual event. LinkedIn is this virtual event. And then you want to make sure that you are nurturing and engaging with those that matter. You do all that, you get a star. 
So uh, another way to look at it, like I've been talking about these analogies is, you know, what you're wearing, the guests and the refreshments, the profile, the network of the content. I explained this to somebody and they were like, oh, now I get it. Um, I also refer to it in gardening terms. So, oh, I went backwards, sorry. Ah, so, you know, like I said, it, you, you're not doing, it's not one and done. So if you think, oh, I'm just gonna do this to my profile and I'm done, check that off the list. No, no, LinkedIn is something that, you know, you can do it in 15 minutes a day, you know, um, and you will see results if you're consistent with your strategy. So, you know, well, what, what does that mean? What does that look like? What do I need to do? Well, first thing you need to do is um, sign in. You know, I can't tell you how many people I've started to work with. They don't know their password. It's like, oh, so you haven't used your account in a while. And then they find all this, these opportunities that were in their inbox that they didn't respond to. Um, the other thing is download the uh, app onto your mobile device. Because I, um, like today, I was waiting for an appointment. The person was late and I had my device with me. So I just kind of checked up on some stuff on LinkedIn and engaged with some people. So again, you know, each day, just sign in and check the notifications. If, if you do anything, the notifications is going to be like that little bell and it'll be all the things that you have tweaked, um, indicated that you want to know about. Um, there's a way you can refine your notifications using the three dots. You can, you know, say, I don't want these kind of notifications or I want more of those. And then, you know, if you can, like I said, if you have the five people bookmarked, you can see what's interesting and you can, you know, add a, a comment. And then if there's time, respond to any messages. But if you put this on your calendar, right, and you just plug it in there, you will do it. And one of my colleagues, he says at 8.30 every morning, he logs on and in 15 minutes, he does his LinkedIn and that's it. Okay, so that's what I would suggest on a daily basis. So weekly, you know, review those invitations. Again, you don't have to review the invitations every day. Review them weekly. You know, if, if you have any new people that are in your network, you just want to, you know, just say, hey, I'm glad we connected. I really enjoyed our conversation or whatever it was. Um, you know, find some new people. Like I said, if you see a post that you like or you've been to an event or you see a list of leaders, you know, or you're applying for work at a company, connect yourself with as many people at that organization. And then since you've downloaded your network, you're going to find two people that you're already connected to that you lost touch with, and you're going to engage with them. And then you're going to share something in your feed. That's what you'll do weekly if you want to build some muscle, right? These are all suggestions. Monthly, like I said, the download the database, publish something, you know, take a look at your metrics, tweak that feed notification, you know, so when you look at your news feed and your notifications, again, those three dots at the top right of most posts and things like that, you can refine and introduce somebody to someone. I just did that yesterday. It's a great feeling. And then make sure you check your settings and your preferences because every time LinkedIn does a, an upgrade or a refresh, they, they default back to what you don't want. And you know the measurement part, this is really, if you're a numbers person, which since you're, I would say a majority of you are in finance, you might get excited about the numbers. Um, I look at post impressions. I look at followers. I look at views. I look at search appearances. I look at how my posts are performing. You know, and I take that into consideration. Um, there's something uh, called the social selling index and they're doing something on LinkedIn because all of my, my colleagues that do what I do, our index rating just went down like 10 points, all of us. And, and so it's like, hmm, what are they doing? But what you might find, I'm not 80 anymore. Now I'm, I think I'm 71 or something like that, which is like, whoa, um, look at this. I want you to focus on where you are in your industry and where you are amongst your network, you know? So this is like where you're ranking in terms of how much of this, in terms of your brand and your, your you know, the people that you're connected to and how you're engaging with them and, and what kind of relationships you're building, you know, that's where they're gonna compare you. So you wanna strive to be in a single digit here. If you're in a in 10% or something like that, you can see, well, I need to do, I need to have a, a, a more, um, refined network, meaning like, like director above level. So if you have a lot of, you know, um, titles that are below director, so that would be like manager and below, um, that, that affects the network score. So that's why the more C-suite, close proximity to C-suite, the higher that goes up. And this is in your industry. This is how you're ranking. So, you know, you have, you can select an industry and then, um, you know, again, don't get too 
upset about these numbers. This is mainly used for sales teams. And it's one of those um, that people of a certain generation are really into gamification. You know, for me, I, I don't care about badges or any of that stuff, but they use this. And when I'm training a team, I will use this and, and have them compete. And I'll say, okay, let's do a snapshot of where we are today. And then we'll do the six week of training and let's see what we've moved the needle. That's what this is for. Okay. So I want you to think about this and I want you, and, and if you don't mind putting it in the chat or you can, you can just speak it out. You know, I hope there's one thing out of all of this, because again, I do like all day trainings on LinkedIn. It, it's very hard to, to, you know, put a whole thing into an hour, but I, I hope I have imparted some insights uh, about, you know, the important things of the platform. You know, as fundamental as they are, I see these things as the most common voids in people's profiles. And so, um, you know, and, and their, their behavior on the platform. So if there is something that you learned today, I would love for you to share it and just put it in the chat, you know, and, and that's good information. And then um, here's some things that I have some resources. I published a book and, uh, and I have a self audit worksheet, uh, which you, I encourage you to use it, you know, kind of go through it and it, you'll see what's missing, what needs an update and what you've done. And the way that you get that is here. So um, this also helps me understand if I did a good job or not. Um, you're gonna go to www.talk.ac backslash Judy Hayes, take a picture of it. And then you're gonna enter that word worksheet. And then it's gonna ask you just a short question you know, with little icons you'll you'll hit, and then you'll get a uh, download of the worksheet. So, um, how are we doing? I think I think we're at the uh, the question part now. Yes, there we go. So, does anyone want to know how to download your database? Do you want me to show you that? Yes. Okay. So, when you're in your your profile, okay, this is like your home page or your profile. You're going to go up here uh, to the the. Um, the little icon and you're going to go into settings and privacy so you're up here you go to settings and privacy and when you get to settings and privacy you're going to go to um data privacy okay and the data privacy right here get a copy of your data you're going to click on that if you've never done this before then do everything okay and it'll give you everything that you've ever done on linkedin in a, in a series of zip files depending on how much there is there if you've done this, you know, before, I just generally do connections because I have all that other stuff. But if you have recommendations and stuff like that, you don't want to lose those, right? So that's why you want the larger data. Um, you go ahead and request it. And then what will happen is I, I would wait about probably about 10 minutes. I keep the page open, I open another tab, and, uh, and then it'll give me the CSV file. So that, that is that bit of information. I also suggest you go through here and, and refine, um, you know, different things. Make sure that you're visible. You know, a lot of people um, sometimes have their profile picture not visible to anybody but their first degree connections, which if you're in a career change, you want to be visible to everybody. So, um, you know, this is where you want to go through and, and just take a look at these different options. Um, there, you may have a different view depending upon which version of LinkedIn you have. Um, also look in where you are signed in. This was a real wake up call. Apparently I was signed in in Amsterdam. Um, I, and in Bellevue, Washington, I, you know, I don't know how this is happening. So these are the ones where, you know, I look at this and I go in and it's like, you know what, I, I don't want to be signed into Bellevue, Washington. I don't know why that's happening. So, so take, sometimes people sign in at these other locations to get the cheaper rates. I don't like, know. Yeah. I haven't gone anywhere. I've been standing yeah. here. <laughs> Um, but do check that because I, when I saw Amsterdam, I was like, wow, that's weird, you know, because there's been a, a bit of hacking going on on LinkedIn, people taking over accounts and that kind of stuff. Um, go through your preferences, you know, all this stuff and, and just take a look at all these things and just make sure, you know, that everything is set the way that you want it um, because it's, it's really important. Um, it, it impacts your, your feed. And what I said about the feed is um, when I look at my news feed, which is going to be my home so the home button is going to bring my news feed, and that's all this stuff. So if there's something here I don't want to see, then I'm going to go and I'm going to. I have this choice, and that's why I said the three dots up there. I don't like that that X is there because that deletes something, and I might accidentally hit that. But here I use the save feature very often. 
And what'll happen is I'll see something I want to put an insightful comment on, but I just can't wrap my head around it or I'm on my mobile. So I'll save it and then I'll come back to it later here. It's in my saved. Or I want to share it with somebody or I want to look at his profile, the person that wrote it, or I just don't want to see this or I don't want to be part of this group or, you know, if there's something offensive. Um, there's some other ones here that um, like if there's, oh, I've seen a lot of stuff from groups here. This is really weird. Uh, the feed has gotten a little bit, I'd rather see the people that I'm following. So it looks like I need another cleansing here. Do you see this? I'm, I'm seeing now, now here's somebody because I'm connected to this person and he likes this, it's pushing this into my feed. So if I don't want to see this, you know, I can unfollow Brent, you know, sorry, Brent. Um, but, you know, again, here's, I'm seeing this because, you know, he engaged with this. So, so there's definitely some work that has to be done. And I had cleansed my feed a while ago. I don't know why it's doing that again. Um, notifications are another thing that you can customize. You know, you can go in and you can look at, you know, I don't want notifications from that person, or I don't want notifications about comments, or, you know, I, I read this, now I can delete it. You know, so you can go through here and you can see if you don't want birthday notifications or whatever stuff is going on there. Um, you know, it's just, just a lot of information here. This is probably more valuable to me than my home feed because these are people that I want to engage with, not the crazy stuff that's in my home feed. Um, you know, what, any other settings or questions that you guys had while I have the profile open here? Is there anything else, um, you know, in your network? Uh, here's the ones that, um, oh, wow, thank you. Um, here, these are these are ones where you know the the invites. I I'm a little bit backlogged here, but um you know I I go through these. I actually before I connect with somebody, I am going to look at their profile, and you know see what they have here. Um, you know here's a, here's a weird one. I'm inspired by your story. I want to work under you. I'm on a mission. You know th this is really weird because I, it's just almost a little creepy. Um, but anyway, um. I'm thinking about hiring someone to help me, you know, all, all these kind of crazy things. Uh, just go through and, and make sure before you connect to somebody that, you know, it, it does make sense for you. I love newsletters. Um, if you do launch a newsletter, just know that the name is really important, you know, because that's how people make their decisions. They either accept it or ignore it. Uh, if you have a page that you've set up for yourself, you can invite people to follow it, which again, ignore or accept. You can run events on LinkedIn. So if you're good with video and you want to do LinkedIn live or LinkedIn audio, it's a fantastic way to, you know, position yourself as a subject matter expert. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's other, th there's a lot of different things here. Groups are, uh, groups are just not what they used to be, but I tell you what I like about some groups is um, you can you can find people in a group. So these are these are uh, PR professionals, and I can look at the group here. I can look at the members, and I don't have to be connected to them, but I can message them. So that's an interesting opportunity. There is you can direct message people in a group. You know, so if there's groups in certain uh, sectors that you want to get involved with or whatever that's the only reason why i would join a group you know it is really to have proximity to people um you know that are that are i guess a, a similar interest um but again there's there's so much here you know that that you can um explore in terms of, yes go ahead oh hi judy thank you a yes. uh, quick question on the preferences on their is it under privacy where you could choose who sees um that you're viewing their profile like if you want to keep yourself viewing people's profile anonymously is that possible um yes but it's a trade-off because you will not see who views your profile so oh, really yeah if you it's sort of like well if you want to be in stealth mode um yes. i think that there's different levels i find it um uh, profile viewing options. So you have these three options here. There's private mm -hmm. mode. There's uh, this, I don't know why it picks up Rizzoli because that's not my current job. Uh, and then there's this. This is a little weird. Um, this is, you know, the private mode. I, I just keep it like that. But again, if you're working with a company, you don't want, you know, or, or you're researching or something like that. Um, you, you can look at your visibility. Um, again, I, I have that open so if someone is doing a search on google for me they will see my profile so if i go into like uh incognito mode and search for myself i, I want to be visible um 
as far as the connections, this is the one where I've had, you cannot make introductions to people if you can't see their connections. And, and I just want to show you something here real quick. So if I go here, um, let's say I'm searching for a job, okay? And I, I, in order to activate the search, you just go to the search bar and you hit return, right? And it's going to bring up all of these options. So I can look for people, I can look for content, I can look for jobs. If you are looking for jobs here, one of the things that I would do is I would um, create a bookmark that you have the past 24 hours. And so you wanna show the past 24 hours and then whatever experience level you want, whatever salary, whatever, whatever these are, keep a bookmark of that. So then when you log on, it'll be like a, you know, it's almost like the express lane to get where you want to go, you know, and that's one way to do it. But then what I would do is, you know, if there's something that looks really interesting, like, um, let's see, does it have any information here? Okay, one connection works here, two connections work here. So let's say I want to be a content specialist at Abbott, right? And I have, um, who are my two connections? I would reach out to my two connections if I know them well enough. I don't know why I'm not able to, um, oh, that's interesting. It's not showing me, they changed this. Okay, well, you used to be able to see who those connections are because that's what I would do is, is I would reach out to the people that I know and I would say, hey, you know, um, what can you tell me about that? You know, can you make an introduction or whatever? I don't know why it's not allowing me to see that. They, they may have disabled that feature, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, I have alumni at these places, et cetera, et cetera. But if you set the bookmark, then you're able to get to this quicker. Um, but you were asking me, somebody asked me another question here, and I'm sorry if I forgot that. Um, what was the other thing I was looking for here? If you are looking for um, people, this is another thing that you can search. Again, you can go into actively hiring different locations, but I would click on all filters. Yeah, here it is. So I want to know followers of, and I'm going to put um, Adrian Gonzalez. He's one of the top people in supply chain. So I want to find followers of him and that are second degree connections that have um, marketing in their title. And, and the more specific you get here, the, the harder it is to get some results. But I'm looking here for, oh, okay. So these are people that uh, Adrian is connected to that I'm not, but they're marketing leaders. So this is where I would then, when I'm about to be on a call with Adrian, I say, hey, Adrian, I noticed that you're connected to a couple of people that I have been wanting to get an, uh, or a conversation with. Can I run some of these names through and see if you know any of these people? And, um, and perhaps you'd make an introduction or I could use your name. And so, you know, we'll go through the list and he'll say, yeah, I know Valerie really well and, you know, whatever. And then I can reach out and say, hey, Valerie, um, I was just talking with Adrian and, you know, he, he says, um, you and I should connect, you know, it's up. So it goes like that, you know, that's why it's important to, to be able to show your connections. Don't make them invisible. Again, nobody's stealing your connections. I, it's impossible to steal some of these connections. You know, it just doesn't happen. So, um, okay, tell me more questions. What questions do you have? Um, er earlier, you mentioned that you um, you can control um, when you're open for work that only recruiters see that. Can you show us how to do that? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay, so it would be open to, so it's gonna be open to finding a new job. So you would put job title uh, full time. Okay, there it is. Recruiters only or all members? All members gives you that that ban there, which I don't like. Um, recruiters only is where you do it right there. Okay, hey, so you put, in, <laughs> put in your criteria, put in the titles that you're looking for, whatever other aspects you want to put in, whatever you're flexible with, any of these things, and then you click recruiters only. Does that answer that question? Yes? Yes, it does. Thanks. Awesome. Oops, don't let me. Judy, I have another question on the similar, well, similar topic in the sense that um, it's told that it's it's not necessarily in your best interest to actually link in, connect with the, um, a recruiter. Right. Because That's they right. could actually poach your connections. Is that? No, I, again, recruiters can get access to things that you don't even realize. So um, 
I don't know if they're going to be poaching. I think that we are on this. This is a social platform, right? So when people are in stealth mode, um, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of that. Um, mm -hmm. So no, I and I don't connect with recruiters. I because they're not the decision makers. They're they're the gatekeepers. They're like the right. obstacles. You know, they're they're trying to find seventeen reasons not to bring you in. <laughs> so I try to connect with the the decision makers. You know, you can probably easily get into the marketing. Once you connect with somebody in marketing, you know, then from mm -hmm. there you can get into the other departments, you know. And like I said, surround yourself with people at a company. If I want to get into Morgan Stanley or whatever the company is, I'm going to try to connect as many people kind of in the mid-level and then work my way up, you know, and look at what they're posting, look at, you know. So if you really want to get into a company, that's how you would do that. You Thank know? you. Yeah, not not the, the hiring managers, talent, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just <clears throat> no good. Hi, it's Leora. Hi. Um, hi. So just to answer one thing about what she said, maybe remove people also viewed. That's when you have your competition that on oh. your profile. That's something to remove. But my question was, what are good hashtags to look for if you're looking for companies who are active, actively hiring right now? So the hashtag debacle is, um, that's another thing. LinkedIn is is doing away with the hashtag stuff here. Um, I, I think you have to do it this way. If you go to people actively hiring, you're going to do it that way. And then you're going to um, bring in the filter uh, with not the connections, but the company. So, so what I would do is go to all filters. So I have people actively hiring and, you know, you might want to look in, again, that's why first degree, second degree is important um, and people that you're connected to, but that's where you would look at that. So I'm going to say New York City and uh, let's just pull, pull in these companies just because they're here. Okay. Um, and then you're going to look at um, what would be the title. I'm going to say CFO. Let's just see what comes up. Nothing. Okay. Um, that may be because of my uh, hold on a second here. Let me let me take out the title. All filters. I'm going to take out CFO. So let me let me just do it this way. Okay. This is what happens with LinkedIn when I'm trying to do a demonstration. Okay, get out of there. Okay, show results. And okay. So this is people that are actively hiring that are in New York City that are at those companies that I picked. And then you can look at who they are. You know, people in business development, they're a lot easier to connect with. They, they are just much more receptive. And once you start connecting with them, you can start connecting with other people. Um, talent alchemist, I don't think so. Um, but again, you can look at all these and that's how you can start to build, you know, at these companies, whichever companies that you pick. Again, I, I picked just these. If I just wanted like, if I just wanted, um, you know, Amazon Web Services, let's see, is there anybody? Yeah, okay, wow. So I'm getting a lot, this is Tesla and Amazon. And so again, I can look at, okay, global head of business development. I'll probably be able to get in with these people. Uh, general manager, technical, no, I'll pass on that one. You know, and you can go and just start connecting. And if they have the gold, uh, that means they are on a premium account, which would indicate, you know, for the most part that they are, well, let's assume that they're active. Um, but that's one way to find the companies that are actively hiring, because it's gonna be the people, you know? These are people that work at these companies. These aren't necessarily the hiring managers, but they're people that, that work at companies that are actively hiring. So that's all companies in New York City. It's in anything certain... you want. It's anything you want. No, these are just Tesla and Amazon. You could put any companies you want. So if I want, you know, whatever the company is, is there a company you want to give me for an example and I'll show you? No, I just wanted to know in general what's open there. And then from there, no. start filtering out. Let me tell you something though. Okay, so there's 16,000. You see the second degree, second degree, second degree. This is why it's important to always build your network. If you have 300 people in your network, you're not gonna, everyone's gonna be like third degree, right? Um, these are companies, I'm not really connected to anyone at, this is Bain and Company, all this other stuff. Um, what I can do here is if I wanna see first degree, who I'm connected to at companies that are hiring, okay, there's 33 results now. So these in New York City, which is where I was narrowed in on, these are people I'm connected to that are working at companies that are actively hiring. So that's really good information. So if I know these people, like if I know Danielle, 
And, you know, whatever company she works for, it doesn't say here, but I'd have to look at her profile. Then I can reach out to her and say, hey, Danielle, you know, I noticed that there's an opening for a CFO. Um, you know, what can you tell me about it? You know, should I apply? Can you make an introduction? You know, whatever. Um, and, and that tends to work out better, you know, than, than not having any connections. So that's why it's important to build your network always that way. But does that help? And then, then what I would do is I'd bookmark it. I would just create a little folder here and I would bookmark it. You know, Great. I have, um, yeah, I have a bunch of um, bookmarks of, of people I like to follow, newsletters I like to read, you know, different things, because I want to make it easy. I just don't want to have to sift through all this stuff all the time. So when I when I finally get something I really like, oh, I like the results here, then I'll bookmark it, you know, and then I can easily come back to it. Okay, so there will not be any more hashtags on LinkedIn? There's hashtags, but again, it's not... Um, I was just, yeah, let me, let me give you an example here. I was just um, working with a conference called Manifest, M-A-N-I-F-E-S-T uh, 2024. Okay, so why is this? Okay, because I got to get out of people. I got to go into content, posts. Um, you got to go into posts and then you put in the hashtag because generally for people, it's not necessarily going to come up. It's going to be in the posts that they share, not the people. So um, that's why if you have a hashtag that you're interested in. So what, give me an example of the hashtag that you're thinking of. I don't know, any of the higher hashtags. Um, hiring, okay, so let's look at hiring. And let me, let me do it, I'll do it this way too to see if it comes up here, hold on. Um, post, let me look at people and see if it does come up for people. Okay, I, I take that back, it's coming up for people. So now what I wanna do is I wanna refine it. So I wanna, let me start with my first degree. Okay, so I'm going to say who has hiring in my first degree. I'm going to say actively hiring. So now we're down to 29 and I'm going to now say I want New York. Okay, so now we're down to nine and then I'll look at any other filters here. Okay, so now I'm down to nine and I can see, okay, these are the people that are hiring that I am connected to. I don't know these companies. I'd have to look up which companies they are, but this would be based on my network and I've got just shy of 10,000 connections, this is what I'm getting at first degree um, for that. So if I, if I pull it back a bit, like if I just say, you know, I could say um, United States, well, then I'm gonna get a bunch more, 28, okay? If I expand it here uh, to second degree, so I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna do second degree, then I'll get, oh, 3,600, but then I need to sort that. So then I might go back into filters and I might look at, okay, so what are the companies or let me look at titles. <clears throat> I'm gonna go marketing, Let's see what we get in marketing. Okay, 121, okay. So, um, so now I got 121 people, I'm not connected to them, but they're at companies that are hiring in the United States and they're using that hashtag. So again, and you can see it, they all have the, the purple, uh, most have the purple. Yeah, they're, they're uh, actively hiring. Uh, yep, yep, they all have it. Not all of them, because you're gonna see a couple that don't. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's how you bring that up. And then once you get it to where you want it, then I would bookmark it so it's easy for you to get to. And then, you know, again, if you're not connected with these people, um, and these are people that are all, I, I picked marketing because I, I find that as an easier entree to get into companies through marketing or business development or something like that. Um, you know, just start reaching out. Look at how active they are. It tells you how many followers they have, which is great. 11,000 followers, 2,000 followers, 5,000. You know, so they must be fairly active. Take a look you know, at, at what they're doing. Um, this one here, you know, just for an example. Um, how active is this person? So I'm looking at the profile here. Oh, wow, look at all this feature content. Look at all this. So I'm gonna look at their posts, you know, and I'm gonna bookmark their activity feed. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna bookmark their feed here. And then I'm gonna look at what they're posting. They're getting some decent engagement here, you know, 49, that's not bad. You know, oh, this one is a good one. She's got a life hack, you know. How hard is that post? That's not hard at all, right? She did that, look at the engagement. That's unbelievable. Look at the comments, you know? And again, and she's responding to everybody. So this is a really good post. These are the kinds of things when you find people that you want to engage with, like I said, pick five, pick five, have a strategy, pick five, engage with their content, then reach out to connect with them. Because when you engage with their content, they're gonna get a notification here, you know? And that's why I always start if there's, you know, Again, it's usually C-suite. Um, 
they're more likely to connect if they see that I'm engaging with their content insightfully, like, like intelligently, um, then they most likely would accept my invite, uh, you know. So, but yeah, she's got all kinds of stuff here. It's a good, this is a good profile. Um, and where, where you think and we make it happen. That's a great head. Look at that. That's a great headline too. Came across a good example here. Yeah. You think and we make it happen. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Thank you. Judy, I, I'm sorry. I have one more question. When I do the search uh, for actively hiring. Yes. Um, I can't find that as a filter. Where where does that show up actively hiring? Oh, okay. Let me, I'm sorry. Let me bring that back. Where am I? Okay. So what you're going to do is what I did was I, I just did the, uh, the hashtags. Let me bring that back. I didn't save it, but I'm going to go back here. Hold on. Boo, 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 boo. There we go. Okay. So I use the hashtag hiring. Oh, okay. So it's just hiring. And then what should, oh, there we go. Just hiring. Um, and then if, if you go to people, okay, so go to people. And the way you get into that box is just hit, put your cursor there and hit a return. Then you'll see this active hiring, actively hiring and the hashtag hiring, because that's going to bring up the purple people with the purple uh, thing. I go actively hiring. Okay, so now they're all coming up. And then you can refine them, and that's what you'll bookmark. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Does that, does that answer? Because I know it's a little technical. What, you know, I, whenever I was in the job searching mode, I always did the hidden job market. You know, like I would, um, I would really tap into my network and I would also look at companies that were uh, getting funding that were, um, you know, coming out with new, new innovations. I'd look at their, um, I know, reports, whatever it is. I mean, I'd really do the research and then I would approach them and um, through my network, you know, make that introduction or whatever. And, you know, that's what I would call the hidden job market. You'll have a much higher chance of uncovering something than applying for a job, which is like, you're one of many and everybody's applying for the job. And so how do you stand out versus, you know, building the rapport, using your network, working that introduction. And then all of a sudden that opportunity finds its way to you. So it's kind of a, a different way of approaching the job search, um, you know, taking charge of it as opposed to, you know, spending all this time crafting a, you know, resume and a cover letter, and then you don't hear anything. And that, that is just so discouraging. Quick question on the actively hiring, is that, uh, you need a premium account for that? Well, I, I, couldn't, I didn't see. Um, I, I do have a premium business account. So I'm not sure if that is, um i i don't know um if you if you want to share a screen and show your um i don't know if we're uh, that no i actually <laughs> but uh i i thought people. on your screen it yeah if you search people you'll see the active hiring button do you do you all have that if you're searching for people here let me let me just show you one more time if we are here oops and let me, let me just take you from scratch, okay? I'm gonna just go on my home feed, right? So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna just hit the cursor and I'm just gonna hit return, okay? And so when I hit return, um, now I got all this stuff here. So I'm gonna click on people. And when I click on people, then that actively hiring should show up. So is that showing up? If you just go, you know, again, click in that cursor, then choose people because you get all these choices. So you're going to choose people. And then this should be an option. And if you click on that, that should bring up all the people that have the purple um, that say that they're hiring. Does that work for you? Uh, check me again. Okay. Yeah, I wish I could tell you. What I, I guess, um, the reason why I have a paid account is, is because I'd like to send out more than five invites a month. And um, yeah. I'd like to see. Does it work? I just I I just checked on mine and it 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 does not. I do not have the um, paid account. So actively hiring under people is not one of the um, the filters. Okay. Well, hi hi. This is Stephanie, and it did work for me. And I don't have a paid account. Oh okay. So are you following the steps? You just put your cursor up in the search box. Yep. 
and then you're, you're hitting the return and then yep. you're clicking people. Yep. And then active hiring box, uh, window button just came up. Okay. Oh, but if I hit it, ah, it shows up. But if I hit it, I get try premium. Oh, sorry. I mean, it showed I, up, but basically, I mean, not to be pushy, but I think anyone who's really actively looking probably needs to get premium because you should definitely be sending out more than five email, five connections a, a month. Yeah. So there's ways to get the cheaper rates and things like that, or you can call up and sometimes beg with them, but you need to, you, it's probably an investment that's worth it. Yeah. And if you're doing it, I mean, you're not going to do it long term. You know, usually when I'm working on a campaign with a client, uh, they'll upgrade. And here's a funny thing. This is kind of funny. If you upgrade, you, you usually get a one month trial. OK, so if you never paid before, you'll get one free month. And right. then if you then like cancel it, then they're going to come back and usually say, oh, it's cost too much. They'll offer you two months at 50 percent off. So kind of work that, okay? Work that system. You'll get one free month when you start. And then if you cancel it before that trial is over or you wind up paying for one month, um, then you say, no, I don't want it. Nine out of 10 times, they'll pop up an offer if you say cost was the reason. And then they'll... Now, I don't think career is a good choice, uh, the career version. Um, I think business premium is a bit... I like the options in business premium better. Um, and I'm, let me see, uh, different, uh, LinkedIn, uh, paid accounts. Let me, let me just bring that up for you. Um, okay. Different account types. Yeah. Okay. So here you go. Here's the premium. I'm going to bring my screen up again. Um, oh my gosh, nothing is ever simple on LinkedIn. What are the different types of accounts? Okay. Difference. Here we go. Um, did I mention that Microsoft owns LinkedIn? <laughs> I won't say anything else since this is being recorded. Um, okay, so here, here's the um, here's the difference here. Unlimited people browsing, premium business, okay? Um, and then business insights. Uh, this alone, I think, is, is really valuable. That alone is really, really valuable. And then you get some in-mail credits. So those are for people that you're not connected to. But remember, in groups, if you have, um, if you are in a group, where those people are that you want to connect with, you can message them without uh, being connected. The, the, um, the, other thing, the other thing we tell people is join some groups that are huge, like the Microsoft group or Harvard Business School or something, because then you become a second connection to all the people that would be third connections. And if you don't have a ton of connections, you need to build quickly. Yes. Um, another thing that you can do is make use of LinkedIn Learning. Um, I, I get it free from the library, but um, you can up your game. Um, there's people that you can connect with in some of those um, courses. Um, you also can get some uh, LinkedIn certifications on your profile. Um, the one thing that I will tell you, and I kind of have a mixed feeling about this, is these uh, collaborative articles. Um, these are totally AI generated and they get you these badges, but honestly, it's a lot of time to create and respond to these content. I'm trying to see if I have one of the invitations here that they've sent me. Um, and it's more of a gamification thing. And, and honestly, I'd, I'd prefer you to spend time um, writing your own content rather than contributing to an artificially generated um, article. I wish I could, why can't I find one when I'm looking for them? Um, no, I can't. Hey, find Judy. It. Yes. While you're uh, while you're doing that, um, I have to tell you and just reinforce what you said. I mean, writing your own articles is not that hard. No. Um, and um, you know, I I write every week. I have what I call tips from Ernie. I love and it's, that. And it's it's written, and they're nothing more than all based upon a theme that month. So I write four or five little quick bullets. And I use the, uh, the uh, what is it, the little clock so I can post them out at a different time and date. And it oh, works okay. really well. Oh, Ernie, your music to my ears. Look at so, that. You know, there's a lot of things you can do down here. This and, is and awesome. if you go down, what's that? This is, uh, your profile is fantastic. This is fantastic. I mean, you, you have all the block that couple times. you have talked about, Ernie. You really do. Um, you know, you've got some good information here. You're on the uh, creator mode. 
Let's check your contact information. Got to give you some tip. Um, let's see here. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. You got the company, your Calendly invite. You are awesome. Oh my gosh. Wow. And we connected today. Ah. And oh, this is new. This is brand new. People similar. Uh, this is they yeah. Just but you know something though. Some of these people I know. And yeah. the other thing about it too is some of these people are so geographically dispersed. Oh, Gina DeCali, she was supported me when I'm I'm the current president of Catholic Charities Appeal. She was a marketing person who supported me. I want to say I, I, I'm surprised I'm not connected to her. And then also here are these little posts down here at the bottom, these little tips from Ernie. You yeah. see higher I and that's all based upon a strategy for that month. And obviously I'm targeting those towards my target company. And that's all that is. Ernie, have you um, launched a newsletter? Yes. Okay, so you do have the newsletter. Yes. Tips from Ernie. Okay, and, and that's published, and that's hashtag. published on um, yeah uh, twice a month. Oh, this is great. This is great. You know, um, I, I look at this, and you've got. I'm going to follow you. Look at that. Thanks. So cool. We're already first degrees. So. Wow. Well, today, as of today, no, this is yeah. not, well done. I like this. You got everything filled and out. And that's my and that's my articles right there for this month. As you page back up, um, if you scroll back up, you'd see that. I want you to think about your um about section. So if I can give you any tip, yeah, almost um, definitely. And again, what I you can take some of your top tips. I mean, you can look at the examples, whatever. Um, but you you've got this is really really well done. This one, Catholic Charities. I think you can um connect to Catholic Charities, and then you can put here, uh, Archdiocese of Philadelphia up in your description. Well, that's actually the name of the place right there. Yeah, so they, that's they, the name they, of the group. Let me see. They might not have a um, might not have a page. They uh, don't. Yeah, I probably would go Catholic Charities. Um, let me just see what they have. Yeah, sometimes you can get it close, and then you. Can... I have to be and you have to be careful. I know because you talk about politically incorrect worlds. That's what Please. you do with Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities of Baltimore. Yeah, I, I would try to find them all over the place. Catholic that's... Charities USA. There's okay. stuff that they do there that is not always um, considered appropriate for everybody. No, I'm glad that you're aware of that. Um, okay, oh so yeah. You've got all this, and look at this. Wow, this is this is fantastic. This is really fantastic. Um, well done. And now you can have, by the way, a hundred skills. The skills are. Um, I'll tell you about the skills. Um, again, recruiters look at the skills. There's a weighted average based on how many recommendations you have in the skills. So if I go, um, and, and by the way, you can also add multimedia to your um, experience section. And you can, um, if you have multiple roles, like in your current company, you know, I do, I'm a profile writer, I'm a trainer, and I do teams. So I, I have these different roles. And then you can tie your skills to the various roles. So again, this is all for the back end. You can put your skills also in your about section. This is mainly for the search. So mm -hmm. if somebody is searching, they're going to, oh, okay, I've got a person that's rich in sales navigator or whatever. Um, the other thing is when you get into, and you can have licenses, certifications, you can have projects, volunteering, but the skills, you can see, um, I didn't put any more from 50 because again, you know, I, I'm not um, searching work but i will say this in terms of um your um, recommendations this is probably one of the most neglected areas on a lot of people's profile but this is what recruiters look at and this is what hiring companies look at is what other people think about you and so what i do is every time i get a compliment or something or i've, I've completed a project i'll reach out to whoever that is i just finished christian's profile here and, you know, and I asked him, I, I just said, hey, we, we, you know, because he gave me a very nice compliment. I said, that's fantastic. Would you put that on my LinkedIn profile? He said, absolutely. Same thing here. <clears throat> yeah, I did some, <clears throat> excuse me, work with Tom, you know, so don't hesitate to ask people or that kind of stuff. But um, what I was going to show you, I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. That happens a lot, you know, because I get excited about this stuff. When you're looking at your um, stats, okay, hold on, blah, 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 where'd it go? Sorry, I'm sorry for making you guys dizzy. Um, boop, boop, we need some music. We need some background music, please. <laughs> We've got the music. Okay, so Baby, when I'm looking for, here we go. Um, search appearances. This is interesting because you can see, um, okay, financial executive, but you can see what people 
are um, where they're working and what their titles are. Um, they're not giving me this. Um, it's interesting. They want me to do something here, but people, I guess, were looking for author. I don't know what that was all about, but it is interesting to look at that and see where are the, how are people coming to your profile is what that answers, okay? Um, the other thing that you look at in your um, profile views here, which is interesting, again, with a, with a premium account, you're gonna be able to see who's looking at, and this Tom, Tom, you're in the group here. See, I got that. Uh, but you can see now when you're in a stealth mode, you may come up like that, okay? Uh, but these are all people looking at, and I go back 90 days here, right? Um, someone here, someone here. Um, but there's some interesting people that I, you know, if I know them and I haven't seen them in a while, I'll just say, hey, wow, it's great. You know, thanks for stopping by, whatever. Just engage with them. You know, use this as a way to engage with people. Uh, what brought you to my profile? You know, interesting views, you know, can help you get a job, you know, all this other stuff. Um, this is what you get with, and I'm again in premium business right now. So, um, Judy, excuse yeah. me. One quick question about that. When, when a person's in stealth mode, do they, do they see that also? What, what you just showed us, I mean, someone in, that. someone um, at white cap, do they see that? Or is it when I'm in stealth mode, that's all I get. Um, whoever this person is at white cap has their setting in the second mode so that they're not totally stealth. They're, they're sort of, sort okay. of incognito. Okay. Um, yeah, they, so I'm seeing that now, now if I click on this, you know, sometimes I can guess who it is. Is Alice in the group here? Uh, let's see. Is anyone, this is Atlanta. So somebody, I would think maybe someone in this group, I don't know, but, um, it's a little hard to figure out who they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the thing that if I go in that mode, it says I'm an author at Rizzoli, which is like, I published with Rizzoli like 30 years ago. So mm -hmm. I don't know why it comes up like that for me. But yeah, the other ones that are, um, let me see, here's, an, here's another one in that sort of, you know, half stealth mode. Here's another one at Barcelona Technical School, you know, in the higher education industry. That's an interesting one. Um, you know, here's more of these people. So this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Trying to see if there's any uh, salesperson at B-Link Marketing, um, someone at Grand Canyon University. That's real helpful. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know what else is here. Someone at whatever that is. Yeah. So, you know, most of them are showing up like that. Um, if they're totally stealth, then nothing is showing up. Okay. Okay. But, okay. Then, but then the flip side is you're not seeing who's looking back. So... You know, if I don't want someone to see what I'm doing, um, and I think it's a, it's not an instant uh, reset. I, I think there's like a 24 hour gap, you know, that if you go in that mode and then you come back, I, you know, again, it's a little tricky, you know, because I don't know if, if, if it takes the whole 24 hours for you to be visible or vice versa. If you want to be invisible and you do it at the beginning of your session, it might take some time for that to work through. So you might want to get a buddy and say, hey, can you tell me if I'm looking at your profile, am I showing up? You know, because there's no way you're going to know. Hey, and, Judy. Yes. Quick question here. Um, and I'm sorry, this is personal. I'm not sure if anybody else is getting this. Um, I have a lot of connections. Um, I am getting um, connection requests from people who put their phone up to their face so that I can see what they look like, but I can't see their face. They have zero, one, two, or three connections, um, no more. Yeah, the person has gone to a college, there you go, ANS, a, AS is shaking his head. It's yeah. obviously this is a fishing expedition. Yeah. I have gone to LinkedIn and said, hey, this is a scam, this is a link. Oh no, we looked at it. Everything's fine and good. Now I've already X this out, but you go back to somebody and try to say, hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. And I reported it's... profiles. Anybody else? Um, I have a bunch of fakes here. Uh, let me see if this one came through. Uh, this one, the most recent one I reported. Oh yeah, good. They took it down. Okay. So yeah, what I yeah. do is, you know, this these things to no end really annoy me. 
Uh, that and slap pitching. Um, let me see. Here's another one. I reported this on 622. Let's see if he was taken down. Um, yeah. Okay. So that was taken down. So what I do is I report them. I mean, there's nothing, you know, LinkedIn. And so have I. And then I get the, and, and then I get the response back that, oh no, this is fine. And it's like, well, it's not fine. Who the heck has zero connections, zero con zero content on LinkedIn? Who 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 went to some college over in India and then now says that they took a program at Harvard? Um, Harvard you know, really and, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's just obviously a bunch of bull, but they just come back and you go to report them and LinkedIn says, oh no, it's okay. Well, meanwhile, I'm blocking. Hey, Ernie, here's the thing about LinkedIn. They they were so hard pressed to get a billion. They wanted that one billion number. And now that they're in countries that are um, more nefarious actors or in those countries, you know, the, it's very easy. And they're, they're using the Android, LinkedIn Android version. And I think it was um, a default that LinkedIn was already added to Android. So, so many people in, in countries that, you know, um, what can I say? Uh, what I would do is I just block them. I mean, because I yeah. stopped reporting because, again, it took me a lot of time and it would copy things. It's like, screw this. I'm just going to block them. You know, I mean, just yeah. block them, move on because they're, they're and, not. And, and that's it, because obviously they're coming after not me. They're coming after all my connections. Well, and, it's not so much your connections. Yeah. You know what they're coming after is when they connect with you, then when they try to connect with somebody else, it's going to say, well, he's already connected to Ernie. Oh, so he must be OK. They're not going after your connections. They're going after the proximity there. So it's like if I'm connected to, you know, Adele and Julie and Ernie, and I'm I'm just a you know nefarious, and then I go to connect with Tim. Tim's gonna say, "Wow, she must be legit. She's connected to those people." Yeah. So that's why before you ever accept a connection request, always look at the profile and make sure it makes sense because it doesn't help you one bit to accept those connections. And if it doesn't look right, if it smells like rotten cheese, you know, you know how to, does everyone know how to report a profile? Anyone know how to do that? No. All right. Let me, let me show you. This will bring me joy. Um, if this person was a problem, which she's not. So let me, let me just, cause I don't want to get in trouble for anything. Let me see if I can find, let me find one of the beauties that have invited me. Um, cause I got a couple of goodies here, here, let me bring this up again. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay, so I'm going here and I'm going to go into my invites and I'm going to go into the ones I've received and, and thank you all for, for putting context there because I, I stopped accepting ones that don't have any unless I know who they are. But let me let me go through here and find, um, first of all, that's a violation right there. And, and um, this person has one mutual connection. Okay, so let's look at who this is. Uh, 43 connections. I'm very suspect on a profile like this. It's not, that's actually against terms of service because you have to have a picture. Um, this person has weird posts. Let's see, who are they connected to? This profile doesn't even make sense. Uh, Dana. So Dana accepted that connection. So if I think there's a problem with this person, you're going to go here, you're going to report it, and you can report the entire account and I believe it's not a real person and you submit the report. Okay, thank you. And then, then you can go in and you can do this again and then you can block the person. Okay, and you can do that. I'm not gonna block the person yet, uh, but, but you report first and then you block and that's it. You know, beyond that, I would not give them any more free rent in your head, uh, but don't connect with anybody that you haven't looked at their profile. It really has to make sense has to make sense that is this person going to add value to my network because here's the thing when someone reaches out to connect with you the default is they automatically follow you so i think that i don't gain anything by connecting with these people because they're already following me i don't need to connect with them i don't i don't need any more connections right i mean it, and it's not about quantity it is quantity but it isn't quantity so i take that back you you need quantity but you need the right quantity so that's why I said, go with your alumni, go with your past colleagues, go with your clients, go with vendors, go with what you know, go with content that you like and reach out to those people. So build that kind of network, which is a real quality network. 
And that will help you as you are doing other things because you'll have those connections. But if you're accepting these weird, you know, things because you, you oh, you're welcome. Um, because, you know, yeah, you gotta add these, Judy said you gotta add connections. Like, no, 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 I'm not saying add connections. I'm saying vet, curate, curate a really good network. It's like, you're gonna have a party, okay? You're allowed to invite a thousand people to this party. Who are you gonna invite? Let's say a hundred people. Yeah, you know, I mean, you don't wanna invite like, you know, randos. <laughs> You know? Well, on the on the rant, on the rando note, why don't we we wrap it up with any final point, Judy? But this has been amazing, amazing, amazing. We're so grateful, and this this end part where you're going through and showing is unbelievably helpful. Well, you're you're all great, great. Um, you know, to stay on this long, um, and and thank you, Joyce. Joyce has taken a lot of effort to work with me in terms of crafting this presentation to make sure that we were meeting the mark. And I hope that again, you take away one good idea here and if it's the only thing you do please download your database okay you, you just want to take control of your connections and then you all have connected with me I, I hope to engage with you further you know and if you have questions if you download that worksheet you all got that code whatever um that's a good self-assessment that you can go through your profile and then you can see ah these are areas that i really need to work on because otherwise it's like i don't know where to start use the worksheet and it breaks it down. I, I use it based on the social selling score because that's what I train on and it'll help you, you know, understand, okay, I need to do this, this, and this. And then it's, it's like trying to organize your garage. Has anyone tried to do that lately? You got to start with one little section. I'm going to do the box. I'm going to do the rack. I'm going to do this. Same thing with your profile, you know, just, uh, just have fun with it. You know, at the end of the day, let's remember this. We are H to H. We are human to human. You know, we're just people we, and, and people, I think inherently, I believe in humanity and that we want to help one another. And so, you know, if we can make introductions, if we can, uh, you know, if there's an opportunity, oh, you know, there is an opportunity. I, I think I saved it. Hold on. Tell me if this is something that you're interested in. I was almost going to send this to you, Joyce, but hold on one second. Um, oh, heck. It's the thing about LinkedIn. It's like, I can't even find things half the time, to be honest with you, and I live on this platform. Okay, I'm gonna show you. It's a job opportunity that somebody posted. Uh, uh, okay, here it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of my um, one of my clients uh, here. He just posted this. Um, he says that they're hiring a top-notch corporate controller to join the finance team. And I believe this is in Atlanta. Um, but this is the company, AFS Logistics, they're a client of mine. Um, you know, if it's something that you're interested in, but here, here's the deal. Here's the post. I'll put the post. Let me, let me put the post in the chat. Okay. And, uh, there you go. And take a look at it. I mean, take a look if that's something, you know, again, I, I don't know if they're on site or whatever, but this is a great company. Tom is a great leader. He's, he's a really savvy CEO. Um, but you know, I don't know. Maybe somebody will have a good lead there. So you're you're all real troopers to hang on so late. Wow. <laughs> Did, was there any? Well, thank other you questions? very much. What any a great group. Questions? Great questions. Did we cover it Judy, all? We have to have you back again for part two. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that panel. Let's talk about because you know, like I was saying earlier, and and I'm proud that I'm going to be 65 this year. It's like nothing to be ashamed of. I actually get to you know do that. And, and we're going to talk about different ways to approach this part of our career, because we have spent time collectively building this world of knowledge. And now you've got, you know, people that are like 25 years old making hiring decisions. You know, we can take control. We can take control. So let's do a panel. Let's do a panel and, and have that conversation and give people okay. another option to think about this next, you know, your next chapter in your career. Yeah. Okay. And if anything, so just make sure you get a good colorist. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Download the chat, everyone. Oh, yeah. yes. I better do that. Wait, wait, wait. How do I do that? Save chat. Okay. Awesome. Thank you all. I appreciate your time.